Some of the best dating advice that I ever received that I'm now going to pass on to you came from one of my original mentors in the game, Todd V. Uh, Todd V. Dating is his channel. He's a huge influencer, amazing dating coach. And what he taught me that a huge part of game, be it in person, face to face, but especially when texting women, maybe a girl you've already met in person or especially online, Tinder, Instagram, something like that, simply knowing where you're at with the girl, what I call the temperature of the girl. Is she cold? Is she warm or is she hot? Just know Knowing the temperature, how into you she is, how much effort she's putting into it can tell you which girls are the time wasters and which girls actually want to meet up with you. Because every single guy, every single one of you watching this video has been in a situation where you're texting this girl. She's responsive. She's liking your stories. She's watching all your stories, etc. She's communicative. But the second you go for an in-person meetup, boom, she just can't. Her dog is sick. Her goldfish just died. Something like that, right? She can't do it. So here are some ways in which you can quickly recognize, again, any girl you're texting, be it online or in person, which one are worth it, which ones you should continue to put the effort into, and which ones are not worth it, okay? So number one, I have some notes here, is uh, response time, right? When you text her, does she respond quickly, or does she take forever, you know, a day, day and a half to get back to you? She's taking a really long time to get back to you, probably better just to avoid it or go for like a Hail Mary, you know, ask her on a date. If she says yes, have a backup plan because she'll probably flake. Like, that's not that's a very strong commitment, right? Also, the thoughtfulness of her responses. Let's say you're maybe a little bit later in the interaction. I wouldn't do this off the opener, but you're giving like longer text messages, maybe they're, you know, three, four, up to five sentences long, which is fine as long as she's reciprocating that, but that's not fine if she's not. So if you're making a clever observation about her content, you send a really witty text, like sometimes you know it, you just nailed it, you send a really witty text or whatever, you're telling like a quick story about your day and she's just responding, ha ha, yeah, ha ha, cool, or thanks, thank you, right? Just basically cut them off, they're not putting any effort into it, save your time and energy and effort for texting other girls or, you know, just the gym or making content, start a YouTube channel, you know, whatever, save your time for better things. Another huge one, is she asking you questions? It's something we use a lot in face-to-face -face game, right? So typically when you go up to a girl in a cold approach situation, bar, street, whatever it is, and you go up, it's kind of like the 90-10 rule. My buddy Owen Cook, RSD Tyler, one of my good friends to this day, uh, I don't know if he came up with it or his mentor, Mystery, but the 90-10 rule means when you go up to a girl, it's usually you doing 90% of the talking and her just doing 10%. So you walk up, hey, I thought you were cute. And, um, oh, look at your sexy little nerd glasses. Where are you coming from? Oh, you're a business woman. And yeah, that's cool. And let me guess. Let me guess. I'm going to cold read you. Hmm. You're like one of those work hard, play hard kind of girls. You are, aren't you? Da, da, da. And you're just kind of like spitting value very, very quickly, maybe 20 seconds in, 30 seconds in. You want it to switch from 90 10 to 50 50. And over texting, the way this translates, or even in person, is like I said, the thoughtfulness of the responses and, and the, are they asking you questions? So when I lived with Todd V in Vegas and we were going out, we would tell the students and just kind of realize for ourselves that, you know, you do this 90 10 rule thing. And then the second she starts asking you questions rather than just like, I am responding. Man is talking to me. I must be polite and answer his questions. But the second the conversation dies, I'm going to leave and I'm get out of here. But the second she starts asking you questions, trying to get ascertained information from you. Oh, okay. now you can just kind of oh sink back into your chair and just relax, right? Because if she didn't like you, if she wasn't at least interested, at least willing to give you a chance, she wouldn't be asking questions generally. Unless she's like really polite, there's some exceptions, right? But generally, that's when you're gonna go, ah, like you've reached like the hook point as it were, right? You know, she's asking you questions, you can kind of relax because she's into you, right? You can kind of know that there, there's hope, right? That, that this is probably going somewhere, basically. Next thing, this is more for texting stuff like that, especially with pap support bros. Well, this, this applies to anything, but you're texting a girl, any type of rudeness or entitlement or she's like scolding you. So for instance, in the city of Medellin, everybody calls everybody amor, right? You call the waitress, you call the fucking, I don't know, whoever, anybody you meet for the first time. Uh, uh, no, amor, está bien, da, 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 da. Everybody says amor, which means love. I was texting a girl, a beautiful girl from another part of Colombia, and I called her amor, and she's like, why would you call me amor? That, that's too soon, da, da, da. I'm like, well, hey, you know, I live in Medellin, and I'm a foreigner, and I have seven years of experience speaking Spanish in a particular city, and you know, people, and she goes, I know, I know, but why would you say that to me? So it's like, she she knows that I'm a foreigner. Spanish is my second language and that I lived in Medellin and she's still like choosing to scold me when I talk the way that people from Medellin talk and she's like aware of that. Just blocked immediately, right? Then she like found me on another account. Like, why did you block me? Bitch, because you're like, girls don't usually nag you till like, you know, a couple months into the relationship. If you're already nagging me <laughs> this early on, I can only imagine if I was to date you for like six months to a year, right? Asking for any type of financial help is another big one. And here's the best advice you'll ever hear in terms of like texting, online dating, etc. 
Now, again, I know most of you guys aren't getting a shitload of matches or, you know, meeting a ton of girls on Instagram. You got to build a high status profile like we talked about. Go to redbeardrants.net. But for those of you that are, what you want to do is send compliance tests. Okay, so a little escalating series of compliance tests. So my general, like, funnel or flow, whatever you want to call it would be, I send voice messages very quickly. Voice messages build a lot of attraction. You can use your voice. You can use the inflections in your voice, show a lot of more confidence, humor, tell quick, you know, 10, 15 second stories, etc. So I'll say, Hey, you know, I've sent you a lot of voice messages. Uh, would you mind sending me a voice message? Because uh, I'm just curious what you sound like. And also lets me know you're not a catfish. Ha ha. Right. She won't send a voice message cut off. Then later in the conversation, not the very next text, but maybe, you know, I don't know. It could even be a day later, right? Say I'm at the gym. I do a quick gym selfie. I'll say, Hey, you know, I'm just at the gym you know, here's my gym selfie. Uh, what are you up to? She goes, oh, you know, I'm at the office. Cool. She's at the office. I know two things immediately. Number one, there's generally good lighting, like, you know, windows, like in the room I'm in right now has a big window, uh, you know, clear light is hitting me. There's no, you know, external lights. It's all just sunlight, right? And then also offices, generally, they also do have, you know, plenty of good lighting. So I know she's got good lighting and I know she's got her makeup because no girl in the history of humanity ever went to the office without having uh, her makeup fully done. So I'll say, hey, send me a quick in the moment selfie. She won't do that. She won't comply with that. She's done. Later on, let's see, what's my next compliance test? Oh, what I like to do is find a picture on her Instagram and then send her her own photo on Instagram and say, yeah, uh, I really like this photo of you. It's actually my favorite. Why? Because he looks so cute in your graduation photos and I like girls that are, you know, smart and ambitious, not just beautiful. So they add your cute little graduation photo. This is my favorite or whatever it is, your, your gym photo, because I like girls that take care of their health and take care of their body, right? This is my favorite photo, whatever it is. And then you say, hey, now same question, which photo on my Instagram is your favorite? Now, again, I wouldn't do this within the first two, three, four minutes of texting a girl. This would be after, you know, a couple back forth, back forth, and then see if she'll go through the time and the effort to do that. If she will, I mean, think about it. She's got to stop what she's doing, scroll through my entire Instagram, analyze it, choose a favorite photo, send it to me, and then write an essay. It could be like one or two sentences, right? But she's got to write an essay giving reasons on why she chose that as her favorite photo. And you're asking her to put it in investment. You're asking her to put in work. And the final compliance test could be like a video call, right? And if she's willing to like choose her favorite photo, you know, spend time, you know, evaluating the photos and send it to you, get on a video call. She's very, very likely to show up on the date, right? Because especially if you're like funny and interesting, you make her laugh on the video call. If you can be charismatic and funny and interesting on the video call, then you're you're gonna win. She she's very, very unlikely to flake. So that's just something to keep in mind, guys. Uh, that's really all I have for today. Go to redbeardrants.net if you want more help. Follow me on Instagram where I give even more advice, which is just redbeardrants. One, don't give these hoes any more free attention. Do the compliance test. Know where you stand. Any girl that isn't texting back quite a bit not putting effort into her responses, not asking you any questions, taking forever to respond, etc. Cut them off, save your energy for better things, and I wish you all success and love and happiness, I guess. Anyway, peace.